Welcome again. Now we are moving on the second part of this working day, which is dedicated to presentations by Serbian ERC grantees. Within this part, we have three presentations. The first presentation will be given by Ms. Magdalena Djordjevic from Institute of Physics, University of Belgrade. The second will be presented by Ms. Jelena Rajenovic from Catalan Institute for Water Research, Spain. And the third one will be presented by Ms. Natasha Perjul from Barcelona Supercomputing Center, Spain. Please, the floor is yours. So, uh, hello, thank you for having me here. Um, so, my name is Magdalena Georgievich, and here are some basics about the project. So the title of my project is QGP Tomography, Exploring Little Banks and Landmark Experiments. The project started two years ago and it will last for three more years. And this is the total budget. And the host is Institute of Physics Belgrade, which is, I think, um, a flagship research institution in Serbia. So here is briefly about myself. And this is actually the slide from uh, my own ERC presentation. And perhaps most importantly, I spent 10 years of my research in the United States become, before coming back to Serbia, where, now, where I'm now a research professor at the Institute of Physics Belgrade. So uh, here I come to the uh, topic of my research. So this is quark-gluon plasma. And it is predicted by quantum chromodynamics that at extremely high energy densities, a new form of matter uh, will be created. This form of matter, called quark-gluon plasma, consists of interacting quarks, anti-quarks, and gluons, which are no longer confined. It is believed that this new form of matter existed immediately after the Big Bang, which marked the beginning of the universe. And today, this form of matter can be created in so-called little banks, which are relativi ultra-relativistic heavy ion collisions in uh, RIC, relativistic heavy ion collider in uh, Brookhaven National Laboratory in, in United States, and Large Hadron Collider, or LHC, at CERN in, uh, near Geneva. So by exploring the properties of this new form of matter, we can learn more about uh, this uh, uh, gluon plasma as well as we can learn about the origin of matter at its most basic level. So by now, it is widely accepted that, uh, that uh, quark gluon plasma is discovered at this experiment, at, at these experiments, and the current challenge is to understand the properties of this new extreme form of matter. So uh, the project goal is to develop a novel tool for inferring the properties of this new form of matter. And very simply, the main idea is that when high, part high, high momentum particles go to core gluon plasma, they will lose energy. And this energy will depend on the properties of the medium that these particles are probing. So then by predicting, theoretically predicting this energy loss and by comparing this theoretical prediction with a large amount of experimental data, we can infer the properties of this quark gluon plasma. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, and, uh, okay, so that's it. So uh, basically the project aims to answer uh, some specific questions, which are at this point very important within uh, for the uh, understanding of this new form of matter. And this is whether this quark gluon plasma is a fluid or a gas-like system, whether the quark gluon plasma exists in small systems or it can exist only in large systems of that is collision of very large ions, then can a single theoretical approach explain both the, the wealth of experimental data for different probes, experiments, collision energies, and so on? So bes besides these uh, specific questions, the uh, project has a goal, um, several very significant goals. And this is uh, the fact that very large amount of financial and time resources are invested at LHC and RIC experiments. And this new novel tool will put this massive data to optimal use. Moreover, uh, we will 
likely develop a more realistic picture of an exciting, of this exciting form of matter. And what is most important is that we have an optimal timeline of this project for exploring this large amount of LHC and RIG data as this full QGP tomography tool that we, are, um, th that we are developing will be ready for the dawn of the high precision era which is expected to become soon available at RIC and LHC. So this is just briefly about the grant. And now I will concentrate on some more practical issues of how I applied to, uh, to the grant and what this grant mean, um, uh, means to me and so on. So first, how I got to the grant. So before the grant, I had one PhD student and one senior collaborator. I was not able to apply to two national calls as there were cutoffs in the minimal number of people that one must in include before securing the funds. And then um, I was also developing the energy loss, but the research was mainly theoretical with a limited applicability to large scale experimental data and with basically no ability to uh, for QGP tomography. Uh, the application process, in my case, uh, uh, consisted of two parts. First one was unsuccessful, and the second one was successful. So first, in 2015, I applied to ERC starter grant. I got to the second round, to the interview, but I was not successful in securing the funds. So in retrospect, I argued too much about the feasibility and preliminary results of the project, so the project was unfortunately not perceived as high risk, high gain. That is, it appeared to be too low risk. So, and then later I found out that the project was highly rated at the interview, but the referee grades on the written part of the proposal were not good enough to secure the funds. However, um, then I decided Based on this knowledge, I decided next year to apply to a consolidator grant. So um, I was not able to apply anymore to starter grant as the, due to the age limit. And for consolidator grant, there is actually a much larger competition uh, between the researchers. So, but basically um, what I did is uh, based on the experience from the previous both interview and also the uh, written part of the reviews, eight reviews that, rece that I received, uh, I uh, re improved the grant writing. I sent to colleagues for comments well ahead of time. Then based on these comments and critiques, I additionally improved the grant, emphasized high risk, high gain, and then um, also added some new features to the grant, which in the meanwhile, within that one year became hot topic in the field and also which were related to the main topic of the proposal. And then in uh, overall, I had much better su success. The proposal was ranked second in the panel fundamental constituents of matter, which ranges from nuclear and particle physics to optics and statistical physics. So my main message is uh, to basically to, re to learn from your own mistakes, to improve your proposal and to apply again. That is not to give up. So how the uh, team look now? So um, up to now, we, besides myself as a PI, there are also three senior scientists in the group, two postdocs, one PhD student, a student and one master student, and two, um, uh, two external um, consultants. Uh, the group is largely international. Um, postdoc and a senior scientist are from Finland and they bring expertise in relativistic hydrodynamic simulations which did not exist in Serbia before the grant. Uh, also PI and two senior research scientists and the postdoc uh, have a significant, that is total more than 30 years of research experience in the United States. So regarding the equipment, uh, the project is mainly theoretical. So the equipment that we need is high performance computing uh, facility. And basically, uh, this high performance computing equipment is necessary for both relativistic hydrodynamic simulations and for using output of these simulations in uh, very demanding energy loss calculations that has to be, have to be compared with the experimental data. So for that, we uh, have an access to IPB supercomputer. We currently purchase, uh, are per at this po point, uh, we are purchasing dedicated hyper performance computing equipment and additional equipment will be purchased soon. So with regard to this equipment, I will now discuss 
uh, some advantages and disadvantages um, with ERC funding. So the large advantage is the uh, flexible allocation of funds. That is, the funds can be transferred from between the budget lines, from one budget line to another. In uh, our own specific example, this turned out to be very, um, very important because when we applied for the grant, we um, estimated that we will need around 300,000 CPU hours for the execution of our project. However, due to explosion of the experimental data at the LHC, which already became available and which will become available with the um, high luminosity run in 2021, we actually realized that we need more than an order of magnitude more computing power than we initially estimated for the project. So then what we managed to do is we re reallocated the funds so that we um, actually at this point we purchased one high performance server and we are acquiring for additional equipment very soon. Uh, so this is a large advantage. The disadvantage is that the money has to be to some extent pre-financed. And that is what we experienced with this purchasing of the equipment. That is, you obtain some amount of money, one quarter of, of the total funds in advance, and then anything extra that you want to spend, you have to pre-finance by your institution, and then it is going to be refunded to you later. And this can be a problem with Serbian institutions because it is known that Serbian institutions do not have money. So um, this was the problem with our equipment, but actually in that case, Ministry of Education, Science and Technological Development helped us with this, and we are very grateful for that. So here are results obtained so far. So during the, so as I said, we have two years, we just finished the second year, and just in the September 1st, we started the third year of the project. So after the two years, we can give some summary of what we did. So during the first year we did, we had no papers published, we assembled the group and we early started to work on most demanding part of the project and that is the code for combining full hydro evolutions with the energy loss to generate these most sophisticated energy loss predictions in order to extract the properties of this form of matter. During the second year we have six papers published in high impact journals, two in FISREF C rapid communications, one in physics letters B, one in FISREF C, one in journal physics J, G and nuclear physics A. And all these published papers are on the formal, formalism development and use more approximate models of medium evolution. What is very important is that we developed the code for energy loss predictions with full 3 plus 1 dehydro. This is this most demanding part of the project. And this is not in the papers, these papers above. And moreover, we obtained very reasonable preliminary results, which already attacked, attracted much attention at the conference. So at this point, which we have more ideas of what we want to do than person power in the group. So if you know students who would like to join the group, please recommend them in. We are very welcome to accept them in our, um, I would say, very efficient team. We also um, presented 14 talks and six posters at major conferences such as Quark Matter, Hard Probes, Initial Stages, Strangeness, Charm, and so on. We had seven invited seminars at major institutions such as MIT, Brookhaven National Laboratory, Duke University, CERN, and so on. And these talks were not given only by PI and senior scientists, but also uh, largely by PhD students and postdocs. So project and DRC also received um, a lot of popularization. So after receiving the grant, we were widely popularized in the media. Uh, we, um, in total, I presented more than 50 uh, interviews in popular media, such as TV, newspapers, radio shows. Um, the, um, the achievement of obtaining DRC grant appeared in front pages of uh, high circular newspapers in Serbia, such as Politika, Večernje Novosti, Danas in highest viewed TV shows such as RTS, Pink, TV Perva, uh, Copernic, Al Jazeera, and so on. I also, based on this year's grant, I received several prizes such as MCM Hero Award, Bliss Jena Award, Persons with the Best Lifestyle, and I recently became a member of Young Academy of Europe. So, and in all these events, contribution of ERC to Serbian science was clearly emphasized. So, in conclusion, uh, ERC is not easy to get, but it really made a, le a, a real qualitative distinction in how I do science. It is not only larger funds, more people, equipment, but it is also a very different level at which I do science. 
Um, for obtaining the grant, good skill and strong CV are the most, um, good idea and strong CV are the most important, but also additional skills are needed. In particular, good grant writing, time, pla time, time planning, um, oral presentation, discussion skills, and this is due to the interview. Uh, then you also learn through the application process itself. So by carefully studying the literature when, when writing the grant, by preparing for possible questions at the interview, by getting feedback from the colleagues to which you sent your grants and critics, and then addressing this in the proposal and so on. And overall, uh, regarding once you get the grant, the project funding serves well for the efficient project execution, but it is not, optimal, not optimally adapted to Serbian circumstances. All in all, it is very worth trying to get. So here are my acknowledgments. So first, I would like to thank my whole team for um, this very exciting project and for their diligent work on the project. Also within that, I would like to hand, uh, thank my husband, who is also a team member, who is for his own support through all stages of the project ap application, execution, and so on. I would like to thank Zoran Petrovic, Petar Radzic, and Sofia Stefanovic for valuable advice and uh, encouragement during the project application. I would like to thank Institute of Physics Belgrade for creating overall positive conditions and making, uh, that made this grant possible. Uh, I would like to thank Alexander Bogovic, Anton Balash, Lidia Zhivkovic, and the whole IPB administrative team, which was very helpful. This is our first grant. Uh, with regard to this, we had a lot of questions which we didn't know, know how to answer. So ERC administrative staff and grant management were very useful in answering all the questions that we had. Also, I would like to thank Ministry of Education, Science and Technological Development for their help with cost pre-financing. Uh, and for general positive attitude towards the project because this was really important in order for the project to remain successful. And with that, I would like to send my special thanks to Vladimir Popovic and Viktor Netovic. And also what is most important, we basically this is the first grant in, in, uh, in natural sciences, so there is practically nobody in Serbia who actually received this kind of grant who can give you uh, back uh, uh, the um, um, the opinion how this should look like. So many colleagues from my uh, own community helped in this. When I was sending the, um, the project for them to read, to comment, to send their critique, and with their advice and comments, uh, this was all made possible. Thank you very much. So the questions will be after all three presentations, and I would like to invite now Ms. Jelena Radjenovic to join us on the stage. Uh, okay, so uh, thank you very much, first of all, for the invitation to attend this event. It's, uh, it's my great pleasure to be back in Serbia for work, actually, <laughs> after about uh, 15 years of, um, well, leaving Serbia to live abroad. Uh, so, um, I am an ERC uh, starting grant awardee. I am, uh, well, since 2014, living and working in Spain. I thought it would be a good idea, first of all, to introduce myself by showing you a little bit of my scientific trajectory. So, um, I, well, what I am, uh, I am an expert in uh, water and wastewater treatment uh, technologies. Uh, I'm working a lot with novel uh, treatment methods that involve electrochemistry and uh, um, focusing a lot on elimination of really persistent uh, pollutants that we don't want present in, in any kind of, in wa of water in our environment. I graduated from the Faculty of Technology and Metallurgy here in, in Belgrade in 2004 in biochemical engineering. Uh, then I did a PhD at uh, the University of Barcelona, uh, which I finished in 2009 and shortly after was moved to Australia to the University of Queensland, uh, where I spent five years. Uh, this is where I really kick-started my, my research in uh, environmental technologies and electrochemistry. And uh, since 2014 and today, I am at the Catalan Institute for Water Research in, in Girona. And um, I was awarded uh, an ERC starting grant uh, while working there in 2016. 
Uh, so, um, I actually should also mention here uh, uh, one important thing, and this is that uh, as a, a student of a grammar school, uh, uh, ninth, well, Deveta Beogradska gimnazija, I was actually attending uh, Petnica, which is one very great place here in, in Serbia uh, for uh, bringing science to high school students. And I would say that this is where my interest in science was, was first triggered. Um, so, uh, this is just a little bit of background of, of basically uh, an overreaching arc of, of my project. Uh, this is, well, how to solve the problem of water pollution. So, um, I, um, I had a chance actually, uh, well, which is when I met Professor Bourguignon, to give a presentation in Barcelona about my grant. And when I was doing a little bit of statistical search for ERC grants, uh, whether they are starting consolidator, advanced and so on, that have uh, water as a topic or, or water treatment or pollution, they, I found actually very few projects. And I think, I mean, there are many reasons for that. So, well, I'm not going to go into that now. I'm basically very happy to be actually one of the 12 projects only over the last 12 years that deal with this topic. Uh, and I think it's really important. So this first statement is basically a prediction of World Bank. And this is something that is our imminent future, uh, which is that two-thirds of, of the world's population will run short of adequate water supply in the next 20 years. And this is not just some two-thirds that are somewhere in India, Africa, or whatever. This is also, for example, Mediterranean. So um, th there's a, this topic of water pollution is becoming a really huge topic now. Well, at least in, in, in Europe it is. I hope also in, in Serbia it, it will become at some point. Uh, the amount of chemicals that we just uh, unload into our environment is huge. And really, even uh, uh, advanced uh, water and wastewater treatment barriers are becoming really not enough to deal with that. And uh, there are some kind of keywords that now are really uh, placed a lot in the media, like microplastics or perfluorinated contaminants. This is just really the tip of the iceberg. So. What we really need to do is to find a way to, to treat water and remove these pollutants, but also to treat it in an effective way. And this is what, what has to do really with this water energy nexus. So water treatment uh, has to be something uh, very energy efficient because, well, if it's not, it's not good, then you just contribute to the problem. So uh, to do that, uh, what we are really looking at is changing the way we manage our water. This means... Um, Decentralizing our, our, our treatment, this means looking into alternative water resources like rainwater, rainwater, and so on. And also, to do that, we will have to implement pioneering water treatment uh, technologies. And it's very difficult to get there because, by default, our water industry worldwide is very conservative, you could say. So, um, this is, this is my project, so it's running actually the same like uh, Magdalena's since mid-2017 it started, so we have now completed our second year. So uh, it's really the focused on development of uh, uh, new electrochemical systems, which I just call non-electrochemical systems because we are working with nanostructured materials as electrodes, and in the first place we are using uh, or trying to use the low-cost reduced graphene oxide. So. The, the holy grail is basically to get to, to a technology that is sustainable and robust and, and energy efficient. So, um, uh, I just, well, I was asked to ins include a bit of details about my project, so I hope I'm not going to become, uh, uh, well, I hope that you can, you can follow me. Uh, I, just briefly, what we are working with, uh, because graphene is again one of these words that you hear a lot uh, in the media. We are not really working with, with the fancy graphene, uh, the one that they use on smartphones and so on. We are uh, using a much uh, more imperfect version and also much, much cheaper to produce. It, it cannot really be compared, which is why I like to distinguish it as this reduced graphene oxide. So we are actually aiming at using uh, really uh, the defects uh, in such graphene to induce the degradation of pollutants and pathogens that are present in water. And it's a very hot topic and uh, really the, uh, there's more than, of course, one type of graphene, but what you read mostly is really uh, more something like this on the right-hand side, right? So there have been a lot of reports and also there is now research also more and more emerging also in the domain of water. Now uh, there are such things as graphene membranes for filtration and so on. 
Uh, and uh, the price of this primary product, uh, pri primary um, source for production of this RGO is really graphene oxide that is decreasing constantly. It's one of these advanced materials, right? So um, this slide I've really made for, for uh, people who, who want to apply for ERC starting grant because this is really important. Magdalena also mentioned it. So you really have to emphasize in your project why is your project high risk, high game project. So for, for me, it was really easy when I was writing it uh, because uh, what we were planning to do, it has not been done. Uh, and it actually hasn't been done yet. So uh, most of the research involving graphene was in the domain of supercapacitors and batteries and sensors and so on. There was really nothing uh, that would involve electrochemically polarized graphene for, for water treatment. There, have been, there has been some work where graphene was tested as an adsorbent and so on. So, um, for us, that was really what distinguished us uh, from, from the rest of the research done in environmental technology. And uh, well, the gain, of course, if we can exceed the limits of these current treatment technologies that, that we are using at the moment, well, well that's amazing. And, and we are actually uh, aiming at that because the, the type of pollutants that we're looking at are things like perfluorinated, perfluorinated chemicals or, well, pollutants that are very, very persistent that cannot be degraded by our uh, existing treatment methods. So um, this is kind of the, the, the core really of the project. And um, this is just an illustration of how uh, we are actually using uh, this material basically to produce electrodes out of things as cheap as this mineral wool. This is just what they use in, in construction to isolate buildings. So um, we have some really great results, but it was really not easy to get to these two sentences that I've written here. We are now, we completed second year, like I said, and now these data uh, are actually uh, being prepared for publication. So it's a really long process. Once you get into really fundamental research, um, well, you have to be very patient. And I think two years is even good. So uh, we get really excellent performance and I believe that, uh, well, I, I'm not sure if we are going together, but definitely I believe that this is one of the technologies uh, for the future. Um, and I just illustrated here what I, what I, why I think these systems have so much potential. Uh, basically, uh, in this world uh, where water pollution is huge and, and we, are, we have constant threat of this, of this water scarcity, and, and it's going to happen, um, in my opinion, um, you really have to look towards alternative water resources. So this means recycling your rainwater, but then you have to remove the heavy metals and many other pathogens and so on. Re reusing uh, the gray water in households and so on. So it's really uh, th these kind of systems that are completely autonomous that work, but just by basically using current. So all our other treatment techniques are based on the addition of chemicals at some point. So here you basically just need to have a, a, a plug. Um, this is why I believe that, that uh, these systems have uh, so much potential. So, um, so this is just a little bit about the project. I don't know if this can translate now to somebody who is preparing actually an ERC, if it's useful. I uh, kind of prepared two slides of what I think is the most important thing when, when, when writing these type of grants. And I think what really distinguishes you I think it's really your idea. I mean, I tend to think that for a grant like ERC, maybe, okay, CV of course is important because you need to convince the panel that you can actually do the project. But um, if you have something really groundbreaking and new, I really think that the panel will recognize that. And uh, uh, that can be um, anything that happened to you along your research career, maybe uh, one experiment that you did and you have data that are great, but you have no idea what happened or, um, maybe you think, oh, wouldn't it be great if I could hire, I don't know, a mathematician to work on my biological transformations or whatever. So this is something that, that can really, uh, for this kind of research, ERC can really make a difference. You can buy really uh, instrumentation uh, that is adequate for your project. The funding is very generous. Um, and also, I think it's really important to, to look into direction where other people are not looking. So really to look for something new. So um, uh, I get a lot of comments sometimes from my colleagues that they have no ideas. And my answer is always the same. Well, 
you haven't done your homework. If you have no ideas, this means that you haven't worked enough, in my opinion. So you really need to go back and read, 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 uh, discuss science with your colleagues, uh, look at some major limitations of uh, whatever um, problem in your, in your field. Uh, and uh, I think it's really important also not to focus only on recent scientific literature, but really to look at those old papers back in the time when uh, publication uh, was not a must, but really kind of almost <laughs> like a hobby when, well, there were not so many papers that, that we have to publish today. Uh, there was actually a recent paper in, in Nature, which I just included here as, um, uh, well, it was published in September 2018, that showed how data mining of old papers was actually able to predict uh, a material that was invented only uh, three, four years later after, after it was predicted by this data mining. So this cross-discipline uh, research and connection and really um, trying to grasp as much as possible um, all this scientific literature and information, I think this is crucial for, for uh, getting any kind of, of, of good idea. Um, so that would be really my main advice as far as ERC, I guess, and then of course there are many other components to getting actually the grant, but I believe idea is, is very important. And I just uh, prepared one last slide about the impact that ERC starting grant uh, has had on my career in brief, basically, just the main points. Um, I really um, uh, can do research that I find interesting. So as a water expert, many times you are just, uh, I mean, you, you have to work with industry and from time to time you uh, really have to modify, kind of redirect your research towards problems that they have. They're important problems, but it's more applied research. This grant really allowed me to do fundamental research, to really hire a material scientist, to uh, hire uh, somebody very good in fundamental electrochemistry. So um, I think this is really unique for, for ESC. Um, uh, I could also form, well, here actually this is the photo of my team uh, since last year. There are two people more now. Uh, so I could have a really good team of enthusiastic people that I think they have a, at least I hope so, I would hope that they have a feeling that they are really doing something new and interesting and they're motivated. And um, I could also, based on this grant, I could obtain a, a permanent position um, uh, or that was offered to me by um, ICREA. This is, a, this is an organization of the Catalan government uh, that is um, uh, offering very few of these positions. It is extremely competitive to get into there. But well, by chance, today we are here too, <laughs> ICREA, because Natasha as well. But uh, this is something that, that was possible thanks to, thanks to the ERC grant. So that's all. Uh, I would just yeah, wish you all luck. And uh, yeah, don't forget, if you do get the grant, uh, spend it wisely. <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you, Ms. Radjenovic. And now I would like to invite uh, Ms. Natasha Perjul from Barcelona Supercomputing Center, Spain. Um, I'd like to thank the organizers for uh, inviting me here, uh, ERC, also the ministry. It's always a pleasure to be back to my hometown, uh, which I never actually left. Uh, as you can see, uh, I'm not only an ICREA uh, research professor, but I'm also a full professor uh, at RAF, Faculty of Computing, Union University here in Belgrade. I've been here since 2008. Um, and of course, at UCL that I just left uh, uh, recently, I'm still holding uh, they're basically holding my position in case I'd like to return for any, for any reason. Um, I'll talk about uh, the experiences we were asked uh, to present. Um, what are the keys, uh, the key components to succeed? How to get an ERC grant? Uh, why is it important? And I will just give uh, um, a few um, highlights, what I think is important and uh, how to get them, uh, how it impacted my career, and I will do that through a couple of examples because I held an ERC starting grant from 2012 to 2017, and right after that I also secured an ERC consolidator grant that just started last year and that will last for a few more years. All right, um, so I think the key components uh, to get an ERC 
One key component is mobility. Several speakers before talked about mo uh, mobility. The time has passed where you were locked in your silos, in your little department or your little university or little town, no matter how big it is, and that you could be successful in isolation. You really need to go abroad to see uh, other people, to see different modes of doing science, uh, to get exposed to new ideas. And in particular, going uh, abroad to the US has been very successful. Many of the people who I see in Spain who have returned from the US secured ERCs and, and very good positions. But also uh, other countries are fantastic to go to, such as Israel, perhaps some of the elite universities in the United Kingdom, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and, uh, in many uh, uh, countries, the time has passed where you could finish your undergrad and master's and PhD, and then you go become an assistant professor and associate and fall at the same institution. That is really frowned upon. It's been frowned upon for decades now in the United States, in Canada, in the UK more recently, et cetera, et cetera. So mobility is key. Um, also, you need talent, you need love for your work, uh, but you really also need to work with the best, to learn from them. Um, through my career, I always wanted to be uh, in the presence of better ones than me, to, to, to grow with them and, and to learn from them. And I think that is very important. Then also you need to push yourself to do the best research that you possibly can and to be on the worldwide level. Uh, that means a lot of dedication, a lot of hours of work, and if you're not passionate, like some people were talking about this morning, this probably is not going to happen. You really need to love, uh, to enjoy, and to, to be passionate and have energy for what you, for what you care about. Um, then, a key component is to get the best paradigm-shifting ideas that are timely. And you will get that by thinking out of the box. And again, you'll do that by going through different countries, working with different people, attending different conferences, being exposed to all this wealth that we have worldwide. Also, one of the key ingredients to write very well, not only in your mother tongue, but also in English. Why? Because you need to transfer your ideas. E even if you are the best scientist, if you cannot transfer your ideas and convince people that they are important, that they are timely, that they are good, then you, you cannot go forward. Uh, for ERC in particular, you need to uh, keep in mind that you will not be eva evaluated only by experts in your field. These panels are very generic. I'm part of PE6 uh, panel, um, which is um, uh, General Computer Science and Informatics. And out of around 20 people on the panel, there will be maybe one in your particular research area because the panel has to cover all of computer science. So you need to be able to write to a general scientist in your area, in my case, computer science, uh, but also to be specific enough for these external experts that are particularly in your area who will evaluate your proposal and write, uh, write the comments for the panel to ask your questions. Um, and then finally, um, you have to read very carefully the call for proposals. They change very often, and you have to make sure that you fulfill all the requirements. Basically, you have to press all the buttons that are required at the same time in a nice and orchestrated way to get a beautiful symphony that people will like. All right, and let me just uh, run through uh, uh, cu these couple of examples. I'll talk a little bit more about my ERC starting grant, and then I'll just run through the consolidator. Uh, the starting one um, was um, dealing with a new source of biological information that became available relatively recently, about 20 years ago. We made these machines, the bio biotechnology has advanced, to be able to produce the networks between molecules that are in our cells and our bodies, between proteins and, and ligands and, and all of those other things. Uh, so it's not only the genomic sequences that have been pop widely popular and they've, they've revolutionized our understanding of biology, of medicine, of evolution, etc. cetera, uh, but it is also these other types of data, in particular how different macromolecules uh, interact in our bodies. And they form large systems that need to be mined. Um, and uh, these are just some slides like what Magdalena did from my interview because the interview really needs to summarize your project, 
in a very short time, 10 to 15 minutes, uh, and convince the panel that you are the right person for the proposal. And in terms of education, um, I did the first two years uh, here at the Faculty of Mathematics at the University of Belgrade, and then in 1993, I transferred to Canada where I did my bachelor's, master's, and PhD. Um, before coming to Europe, I held positions um, in, in um, um, America, in particular at UC Irvine, at uh, California Institute of Technology. I moved to Imperial College in 2009, and as I said, uh, since 2008, I've been uh, uh, at RAF here in Belgrade as well. Um, before getting an ERC starting grant, I also had external funding for my research, in particular in the US, uh, NSF. I had the career award, which is an equivalent of an ERC, but in the United States. And then I presented uh, basically how many journal papers that resulted in, how many PhD students I graduated, et cetera, et cetera. At that time, I also secured another grant of $2 million uh, uh, dollars from, from the US uh, uh, and so forth. And also industry started uh, uh, funding my research and that has continued till now. In terms of, this is an example of what might be needed to, to, for you to get a grant, how many citations, for instance, at that time I had around one and a half thousand, an age index of 17. Uh, how many plenary talks I've given at which institutions already at that time I've given 16 Vidi talks, now it's uh, more than 160, etc. And uh, um, uh, software tools that my group has produced by that time. Um, and then I explained that the project builds already on preliminary results of my USA funded projects uh, and publications and software. Uh, and then I went into, um, uh, basically there are several components that you need to explain why you are the right person and why this project is the right project. So now we are getting into the project after talking about the person, and in particular need to take, uh, talk about the motivation of why you're doing the project, industrial relevance, socioeconomic benefits. We touched upon that this morning at, at a wonderful panel. And um, uh, so basically, um, at that time, I presented that, um, that we have entered the turning point in biology and bioinformatics, and when advances in experimental biology produced large amounts of data that are posing many interesting and important problems for computational scientists, and hence require algorithmic and modeling advances to be able to contribute to not only biological understanding, but to uh, uh, therapeutics as well. And this has become a booming uh, research area. I explained how uh, the genetic sequence have revolutionized our understanding in particular ways, but how networks will have similar groundbreaking uh, impacts. And then I presented my main hypothesis, which is that these new data complement sequence, that not everything is the genome, in the genomic sequence. Basically, the genomic sequence is like a blueprint of how to build a house, but for instance, proteins are those that do everything in the body and in the cell, and we need to understand their interactions. So at that time, there was a new hypothesis, uh, and then basically you need to explain uh, what are the, the, the applications, not only in healthcare, and to, to tell them who your partners are. At that time, it was GlaxoSmithKline, who are still collaborators. I'm, I'm there on their uh, scientific advisory board at the moment for networks, uh, for biological networks, also in climate change, and that was in collaboration with Syngenta, which is one of the largest uh, um, um, agricultural uh, uh, companies in Europe, also in synthetic biology with industrial uh, applications, engineering of microorganisms uh, perhaps for uh, uh, clearing the water, clearing the ground, etc. And in particular, I've been working a lot on cancer, understanding the cancer and making new therapeutics for cancer. You need to then focus on innovative aspects. What are the innovative aspects? I said, this is the new source of information that complements sequence. We need tools to mine them. Why we need tools to mine them? Because these problems are intractable in general, but then for particular applications, you can solve them efficiently. And then you have to explain why you will succeed. These are high gain, uh, high risk, high gain, but then you have to have an idea why you will succeed. You have to have an example methodology that is already yielding uh, some results. Um, and also you have to have validation. 
in particular on publicly available data, but also in agreements with experimentalists, with industry, etc. You need to present specific challenges. For me, they were all, both computational and bioinformatics. And in the end, you need to talk about your research team, like a pre the previous speakers talked about, how many, why, how will they collaborate, on which project, what will be their expertise, because this is an interdisciplinary area. I'll be hiring computer scientists, mathematicians, biologists, chemists, perhaps, etc., etc. Right, now the conclusion, um, in conclusion basically you summarize your project, you say why it's important, but then also what it will mean to you. And for me that means that I could return from the US to Europe because like now, uh, London is holding the position for me in case I want to return from Spain. California was holding a position for me in case I wanted to return. In case I was not successful, I would have returned because there would be no other way to do world-class American kind of research with open borders, with full flexibility. Only ERC in Europe uh, enables that and hopefully that will be the case with some national uh, calls as well. I'm very hopeful uh, uh, and trust that our ministry will do some very right moves in that direction. Um, so basically, uh, it enabled me to uh, build my group and become fully independent in Europe and establish actually the first European group on this topic at that time. So that's what it meant. Um, luckily, I, was, uh, uh, well, I worked very hard and I was successful enough to secure the next uh, 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 grant, which was the consolidator that I just uh, obtained. It just started uh, about a year ago. Um, now, when you are going for the next one, it must be different from the previous one. And you have to explain to ERC and to uh, uh, the, the reviewers how and why it is different. And again, uh, this is how my application has changed at the time. Uh, I was already elected into Academia Europea, which is the Academy of Europe, uh, of Arts and Sciences of Europe. I went, uh, I uh, uh, became a scientific advisory board member of many organizations, in particular Helmholtz Center for Infection Research, which is uh, along Max Planck, uh, uh, those are the best institutes, and actually Max Planck is much smaller, Helmholtz are much larger, it's a much larger system of research institutes in Germany. Also, I've become associate editor for, uh, for many journals, but in particular, the citation indices have grown. At the time of application, uh, I had around 6,000 citations, H index of 33. And of course, thanks to ERC, now that's much higher. Now it's around 8,000 citations and H index of 40, etc. cetera. Uh, now, I will be brief here. The proposed advances were algorithmic, but now I was mining not only one kind of data, these networks, but the multi-scale organization of biological information, all the way from genome to higher level organization into protein complexes, molecular machines, cells, tissues, organs, systems of organs, etc. And this time I proposed new machine learning methods, so I proposed advancing computer science methods methods, algorithmic machine learning, and then I proposed pi paradigm shifts not only in data analytics but also in biology. And I proposed a new bottom-up way to redefine biology from the data. So not only uh, like it's done right now, you take a microscope of various types, machines of various types, and you are uh, uh, measuring what you are seeing. Many of the things you cannot see, you cannot see gravity. Okay, you cannot see it, but you know it's there. It's holding you here on this planet, right? And it wasn't until Isaac Newton ex basically came up with his laws of gravitation and motion until we understood how our solar system works, that it's not geocentric, that it's heliocentric, etc. We are looking for such laws because we, ac we accumulated enough of versatile, heterogeneous, multi-scale biological data that we can now build these models. And actually, I just published with my team earlier this year in Nature Communications, our first prototype of so-called integrated cell or an iCell. And then uh, uh, I have concrete medical applications, in particular cancer. One of them uh, is prostate cancer, but also other common cancer and also rare diseases. And on rare diseases, I actually collaborate here uh, in Belgrade with the colleagues at the Institute of Molecular Genetics and Genetic Engineering on a very rare type of a so-called Belgrade mutation, very, very uh, hereditary and severe type of thrombophilia. They have sequences and we are uh, doing the analysis for, for a couple of our families. 
So, again, the key things are the problem that has to be current, unsolved, paradigm shifting. You need to have a vision and ambition of what you want to achieve. And the passion for that has to come both from your writing and your presentation. You have to show innovative aspects. You have to show preliminary data that are promising to succeed. Uh, and then you need to know how you will compose your research team. Um, to summarize, uh, uh, sorry, to summarize this part, uh, medical data have become very complex, dynamic, heterogeneous. They all complement each other, and this was a result of my ERC starting grant that I now build upon to analyze them by uniting various types of methodologies from various fields, including machine learning, optimization, algebraic topology, quantum uh, computing, uh, and uh, all that do doing on high-performance computing, uh, because there is no other way due to computational intractability of these problems. You have to have a huge cluster, and this was one of the uh, big attractions of Barcelona Supercomputing Center because I have all the needed resources to these kinds of works. In addition to that, Barcelona is a major uh, European hub for bioinformatics and, and biotech industry, actually, uh, probably second only to Basel. So this, I'm having a great colleagues there, and it's a very nice and easy to work there. Um, you need paradigm shifting ideas, uh, conceptual, methodological, and you need to address the most challenging problems worldwide. And for me, this is precision medicine that we need to treat everybody individually based on your own genetic markup and your own habits and exposures. Now, this ERC consolidator grant gave me the agility required to keep leading in this field. So one time thing, Five or five years, it's not going to be enough to build and support an interface of computer sciences with biology and medicine to maximize the impact of both. Of course, resources to remain in the EU because constantly I have offers. I have offers both from West and the East to go there, but actually the Consolidator Grant tied me again to Europe. Uh, and, of course, it enables the EU to retain the competence and increase it in the emerging field of precision medicine. And, of course, having Europe to engage as a leading player and shaping the research agenda, uh, not only of Europe, but globally in this emerging interdisciplinary field. To conclude, go abroad. Go to the U.S. if you can. Mobility is key. Get exposed to new ideas. Work with the best and learn from them. Do the best research on the worldwide level. Have the best paradigm shifting ideas. Write extremely well in as many languages as you can. Present as well as you can in as many languages as you can. And fulfill all the requirements by any uh, call that you apply for. So I'd like to thank you for your attention and take some questions.